Hi guys, welcome back to the Astro Imaging Channel. Today's session is on uh, introduction to the new Night Skies Network, and uh, I'm actually not sure how long the uh, new launch of Night Skies has been out. We're going to find out about that in a second. Uh, Joseph, Joseph Sardina, the owner of the site, is going to present it for us. But uh, as always, before we do that, first of all, I am going to show off this week's, uh, this coming week's um, image of the week, and uh, let me go full screen so I could do this. Uh, oh, that was last week's, and Adam, who did last week's Image of the Week, is... How did I get that? Uh, Adam, who did last week's, is in here, and he's going to talk about it. But this week's Image of the Week is uh, by Vincent Hoffman, NGC 7822. Really cool object. And Vincent, if you are out there, uh, you are welcome to come on next week. Drop me a message uh, in Google+, Plus or via our website contact form, and I will get you a link to this hangout, and you can jump in. Uh, but... Uh, last week's image of the week. Wow, this is getting confusing. Uh, last week's image of the week uh, winner is Adam Landefeld. And Adam, uh, I think you are right there. Adam, would you uh, like to speak about this image for us, Seth? Or for? We'll take some time. Sure. Thanks, Adam. Uh, yeah. So this was about ten hours of exposure over two nights um, at a dark site. I, I live near Seattle, but we're lucky to have dark skies pretty close. Um, I shot this with a 4-inch refractor and a QSI 6120CCD, which I recently switched to from a DSLR. Um, I, was, I, I shot M101 about a year and a half ago with a DSLR, and I was really impressed at how much better this turned out. Um, of course, my processing has improved since then, but I think the, the, one of the biggest differences is the image scale, um, which went from about 2.5 down to 0.9. Um, it was really nice having the opportunity to, to actually choose a camera to use instead of just using what I had lying around. And special thanks to David for letting me use his spreadsheet to, to compare scope and camera combinations. Um, and I, you know, this was one of the things I, I kind of hit a plateau with, with image quality, and this really kicked me up over that plateau. Um, there's an interesting story about this image. After the first night uh, of taking data, I came home and did a quick and dirty processing, and the color was really messed up. And, you know, not just star color. The whole thing was just really bad. Um, and so I flailed in PixInsight for quite a while trying to fix it. And eventually I was racking my brain and realized that filter order could cause this kind of problem. And sure enough, the stinking filter order was messed up in my sequence. Uh, I, I created the sequence on my desktop computer instead of my imaging laptop, so I won't be making that mistake again. Luckily, the, all the data was usable. Um, I just had three times as much red as I, as I wanted because I was shooting red instead of luminance. Um, so, yeah, that's it, and thanks for choosing my image. No problem. Thank, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for volunteering it. And, uh, guys, as always, you can submit your images either on our Facebook page or uh, share them with me on Google+, and uh, you'll be up for consideration. Getting a lot of great images recently. And that's a cool example of... Uh, a really nice uh, field with, uh, well, I'll call it a small refractor, but four inch isn't necessarily a small refractor, but then a small sensor, and uh, really... Yeah, the, f the field of view is, is small, but I kind of like it. it. It I think it challenges you to find interesting compositions that aren't as, as common or obvious. Yeah, absolutely. And you get to use the nice Sony sensors with it, too. Um, okay, and, uh, well, on to our presentation for tonight. Uh, Joseph, I see you're in the room. I am basically going to flip the camera right over to you, and feel free to take it away. Uh, and before I flip it over to him, uh, Q and A is active, guys. Up in the top right, click on that, and I will call your questions out to Joseph, and uh, he will answer them. There we go. We see your screen. All right. Hello, everyone. Hi, Adam. Uh, I want to thank Adam for uh, inviting me to come on uh, the Astro Imaging Channel and um, watch every week. So it's a, a very good program. Um, my name, as Adam said, my name is Joseph Sardina. I'm the owner of the nightskiesnetwork.com. Um, we've been uh, on, I've, I've had nightskiesnetwork.com for about two years now. Uh, it was pre previously started by uh, a gentleman, uh, Jim Turner, who had uh, um, wanted to stop uh, uh, taking care of it. So I actually uh, acquired the .com site from him. And um, I am also a uh, amateur astronomer my, myself, as you can see in the picture up above. That's my 14-inch uh, on the LX850. Um, I, I usually go by Stargate NJ, and um, or otherwise uh, Joe NJ. Um, Night Skies Network 
uh, we just updated it about three months ago from uh, using Flash. Now we're at HTML5 resolution. Basically, comes much, comes through much better when you're broadcasting out there to uh, to people. Um, NiceGuysNetwork.com usually works best using Google Chrome or Firefox, and uh, also uh, Brave.com, which is another browser. Um, with some of the new features in um, the NiceGuysNetwork.com, I will explain in, in the next slide. But one of the things I do, I usually don't like to read from slides, and which I'm not going to, but it was created for amateur astronomers, and we have broadcasters from all over the globe. Um, some people set up on a nightly basis when they have clear skies, or some are from observatories. There are some colleges that are signed up with us, uh, um, waiting for private rooms to be set up for them. Um, a lot of these people either build their own telescopes or build their own little box cameras, and um, I'll show you some of the images uh, in, in later slides that these people do come up with. Uh, the site is very, very unique um, in a sense that it, it's a very friendly. Uh, broadcasting is very easy. Um, if, if you have issues, if I'm not there, someone who will log into your channel will help you along the way, and they'll help you, even if you're new to this, they'll help you with your settings and, and how to get those images. Um, we, do, we do allow any kind of camera to come on the dot-com site. Uh, basically, people use video cameras, CMOS cameras, CCD cameras, and uh, we, allow, um, we allow up to five-minute integrations. Uh, that's not including stacking, so um, it's it's very um, it's open to everyone. Uh, software there are software that will allow you out there to basically stack on the fly, and uh, those those are some of the best ways to be able to broadcast is being able to stack some of these images as you're broadcasting. And uh, of course, we all know the more you stack, the better your image becomes. Um, Going through this, I do have some uh, vendors on here. Uh, we have about another 23 vendors to add on to here, which I uh, we haven't had time to add yet, but we will. Um, some of the images that were that were taken, uh, three of them are right up there, which are, are spectacular. When well, Jupiter was definitely uh, uh, processed, but the other two were shown live. Um, so these are some these are some of the kind of images that you end up getting. Um, when people are broadcasting. Uh, there are very simple rules. We do request that people post up what OTA, what camera, what type, uh, any reduction or barlows, any filters, and what mount. And the only reason why we ask people to post, put those up is because a lot of new viewers look at these images and say, wow, I can do that. Well, not knowing that what what it took to get that particular image. And uh, so by letting people know what it, it takes to get that, that image, it's, it, it, it helps out immensely. Um, like I said, we have a five minute limit, not including stacking, and it's plenty of time to show what you want to show to your audience. Uh, we don't allow any copyrighted uh, material on there, of course, and, uh, and the usual, the language and politics is kept out. Um, and the one thing that we do is uh, we don't like people to promote a product in a sense of uh, selling a product to other to another person. But we definitely, definitely suggest when people say, "Hey, this camera is good. This, I mean, I really like it. This and that." Um, one of the cameras that I've been testing out lately in the past three nights is the. Uh, the uh, ZW, the uh, ASI 1600 color, and um, I was talking to a friend of mine tonight about a toga, and uh, I told him, I said, I really like the camera. With the software that I use to be able to stack it and get those live images, people are really liking what's going on. Um, we also are on a, on a um, uh, we're also going to be going forward uh, with Skycam, There'll be a different page where people are able to post their sky cams live 24/7, uh, and uh, if people, uh, 
I know rule number seven says you must attend there, but we're going to be changing that. You don't have to attend your sky cam while you're doing it. Uh, and uh, but if you are and people want to ask questions, that's great. A lot of times people use sky cams when there's meteor showers, and uh, we do have broadcasters that will have used their sky cams. And um, number seven is the most important, and is have fun, be positive, be engaging, keep your show moving, and keep you and and give people a reason to come back. One of the main, main things that I always stress to people about NiceGuysNetwork.com is have fun. And that's, that's very, very important. Um, just, to, just to let you know. Joe. Yes. Joe. Yes. Is there a yeah, question? I just have a quick question. Sure. Uh, uh, people, is there a cost to be a member of this website? Do you have to pay to broadcast or do you pay, have to pay to watch? It is uh, um, registration. Is absolutely totally free. Broadcasting is absolutely totally free. Vendors who are advertising are absolutely and totally free. So the site is basically free. So um, uh, it's it, it's a a lot of people like it, and for me, like a lot of people ask me, why do I do this? And for me, it's it's more like a relax. It's a, like a sort of a therapy. And I want people to be able to enjoy that also by broadcasting and, and enjoying Night Skies Network. Uh, but it, yes, so that it is totally free to join and broadcast and to view. Uh, one thing I will tell you is if you register, uh, what, it, what is the advantages of registering and what is the advantages of just being a, a guest? Well, if you register, you're able to chat back and forth with people within that room. Uh, if you see on my right, on the right hand side where it says participants, of course I'm the only one there right now. But with with participants, there would be a list of participants there, and uh, and the, and uh, you could talk back and forth. You could ask all kinds of questions, all all of that. The uh, um, the interaction, the verbal interaction, is so much better than trying to type uh, your question in. And that was one of the things that I. Definitely wanted with the with the HTML uh, broadcasting. Um, there and you may say, well, what if I don't want to converse with people? Uh, in the top left here, there's a mute button that'll mute you from everyone else, so people can still talk to each other, but they won't hear you. Uh, next to that is disable voice chat. As a broadcaster, you can stop everyone from from uh, talking. So now people don't have an option but to type. Why would I put that there? Well, if there's only 10 or 15 people in a room, it's manageable. But there are times that we have 70, 80 people in a room, and 70, 80 people with open mics can get really crazy. So uh, that's one of the main reasons why we, we, uh, we put in a disabled voice chat. Uh, as I said, this is my channel, Stargate NJ, and I also go by Joe NJ. Um, I'm located in New Jersey, about 15 miles west of Manhattan. Um, to the right of that is interchannel information. That's where you would enter your OTA, your camera, any focal reduction, any information that you want people to know what it took to get the image that you're getting. Okay, um, And then there's a broadcast tool. Now, the one thing, uh, I'll get to the broadcast tool in, in a second within the next slide, but if you if you look below here, if people decide not to talk, uh, they can just type. They don't have to talk. They can just type questions, and uh, and and that's uh, it's very easy. Um, going over, we go to Sky Chat. There are times that no one's broadcasting on NSN, but people would like to share some ideas or talk about equipment or whatever. You can go in the Sky Chat room, and in there you can you can talk back and forth to people. You can type. You can whatever. It's it's a good way. When no one is broadcasting, um, as getting to the broadcasting tool, we have a broadcasting tool for Windows, and we do have a broadcasting tool for Mac. Okay, uh, you download the broadcast tool. Once you download it, you forget about it. It's it's it just hides somewhere on, on your computer. Um, and I'll, I'll, this is the broadcast tool. Okay. Broadcast tool, if you see up here, it says NiceGuysNetwork.com key. 
it will automatically, once you register to broadcast, your, your broadcast channel gets a key. That key will automatically populate in there. You won't have to put it in there. The capture type is select an area. Say, for instance, if you want to just select a certain section of your screen, of, of your screen, okay, you can do that, or you can do the entire screen. Um, so, and you can choose the window to cap. Well, the window to capture is not active yet. It will be active shortly, but not yet. Uh, when they say broadcast type, if you put normal, the refresh, the refresh rate is, I think it's once every three quarters of a second. If you put frequent updates, it, it's instant. It just constantly updates. And you say, well, why would you do two different ones? Well, if you're doing deep sky imaging, you really only need to refresh one and three quarters of I mean, uh, every three quarters of a second is perfectly fine. You don't need a, a frequent update. But if you're doing solar or planetary, uh, frequent updates is where you'd want to be. Um, we have a slider down here for bandwidth usage allowed. Uh, some some broadcasters may not have um, the the appropriate bandwidth to broadcast, so you'll have to like slide this down if you have less bandwidth. If if your if, if your bandwidth is good, if if your uh, um, uh, your service is good, then usually I slide it all the way to the right. I have FiOS and I just don't have any issues whatsoever. And once you do all that, you you choose your capture screen. You get it, you click within it, and then you start broadcasting, and boom, you're, you're broadcasting already. Um, that's how easy it is to broadcast. It's very, very easy. The other thing that Night Skies Network has is a form. It's nightskiesnetwork.proboards.com, um, and a form, and people share, share images, uh, opinions, ideas. Um, there's... People talk about filters. We also, uh, uh, people uh, plan broadcast. If you're planning a broadcast, we'll put it there. Um, so that's, that's the Pro Boards is a, a definitely a, uh, a very positive to Night Skies Network. It, it just gives so much information. Uh, I suggest that if you do become a registered uh, viewer or even just a guest, join Night Skies Network forum, and, and there's just so much going on there. Uh, we're also um, together with Video Astronomy Forum, uh, and uh, we sort of share. Um, it's same same platform, but we we decided that people could share both sides: Video Astronomy Forum and the Night Skies Network Forum. We also have a, a Facebook page, a Night Skies Network Facebook page, was which is run by uh, Crystal. Uh, that is a closed uh, page, so you do have to. Uh, um, apply to and to get in uh, but it's very friendly people post a bunch of images in there they and I mean people ask a ton of questions and how did you do do this and how'd you do that and it's that's one of the main reasons why we kept it closed because we wanted that friendliness to stay in place um, these are some of the, the topics in, on the on the uh, pro boards. Uh, you know, um, deep sky objects section, solar system section, the usual meters and all that um, kind of stuff. Um, people sometimes ask, "What do you need to broadcast?" Well, one of the things, of course, is uh, um, you need a computer. Uh, and sometimes, depending what you're using, if you're using a video camera or if you're using a, 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 a USB camera uh, to your camera and then out to your, uh, and basically that's it, to your camera, your camera's plugged into the telescope. If you're using a video camera, uh, uh, it's a little like a Samsung, um, it's a little bit more complicated, or a Revolution camera, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, of course, you're going to need a uh, uh, some kind of, Audio, uh, not audio, uh, a video, um, hmm, forget the name of those. <laughs> uh, it changes from analog to, to, to digital to bring it into your computer. And, of course, you're going to need a Keyspan serial, uh, serial to USB adapter, and, uh, and it goes out to your camera. And you can control your camera through software. That uh, There are plenty of software out there for video cameras, one of them being Milo Slick. Um, but uh, this is what people do. 
Um, by the way, uh, um, I know last week Adam uh, Tolga did his presentation, which was super, super great. And um, some of these uh, broadcasters have uh, really uh, looked at that broadcast that he did and are really considering doing what Tolga did because it just wire management would be so much better. Um, this is a um, a friend of, of that Don from Pennsylvania. This is some of the things that you may see when uh, when people are broadcasting. He he was actually doing Jupiter. He was trying. He was a little bit um, somewhat or a little bit overexposed because because you can see two of the moons. The others are reflections going the other way. I don't know why those reflections were there, uh, but. Uh, he was using his ASI uh, 224 in live video mode. And um, I, I know that he did record a bunch of these, and then he, he did put them through a, uh, uh, some software, and, the, uh, and Jupiter just came out. Now, he, now he's overexposed, and he's trying to bring the moons out a little bit better, which you can see him slight, uh, slightly better. Um, Going to a next one, these are some of the software that we do end up using. As I said, Fire Capture, Sharp Cap. Um, there, th th there's just so many software you could use to broadcast that it's, uh, it's just that, that simple. And, um, and you may say, well, why are you promoting some of the software? Well, uh, because a lot of the software allows on-the-fly stacking, and it does justice to the images that you're trying to broadcast. Um, this is uh, uh, Mark in Temecula, California. He was using his Attic Infinity. Uh, he had 20 second exposures. He did 20. He stacked 28 of them, which is a total of 560 seconds. And for the Horsehead Nebula, and I think this was first light for him with the Infinity on his uh, 11, 11 inch on his 11 inch Rasa. This I think this was, and. Uh, you know, it's pretty nice. It's definitely for for 560 seconds, it's very nice. Um, this is another image, and I'm just showing a couple of images on what people do live, and this is what you could expect to see on Night Skies Network. But once again, this was done. This was a 30 second integration, stack 10. So basically, um, is 300 seconds and uh, M82. Uh, I mean, it looks pretty nice. It definitely does. As a matter of fact, uh, to be honest with you, I, uh, these images look, did look better than what they do here. For some reason, when I brought them into my presentation, they, they, I don't know why I'm getting all this noise, but it is what it is. Um, this was uh, last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, Maddie, Maddie K. Skies, uh, he did M13, uh, and uh, he did 20... 25, he stacked 25 60 second exposures and in Astro Toaster. Um, that's another piece of software that will, will uh, stack on the fly and uh, give you um, the uh, uh, equipment. Basically, it gives you the possibility of adjusting everything from color to gamma to gain to sharpness to contrast right on the fly. And this was, he was using his AT130 refractor with a Canon 6D DSLR. Um, personally, I, you know, the image looks great to me. Um, Cosmic Obsession, uh, he had done, I'm not sure if I can get this. Oh, I can get it, but I'm not, oops. I think this is a fast one. He did the uh, Blood Moon, and let me take the music off. And he actually um, did a uh, time lapse on it to show how the blood moon. Uh, um, this was done live, by the way. He did the whole thing, the whole show live, and it was just, uh, it was, it was really great. You can just see here. And there we have the blood moon. So I know it's a minute and 31 seconds, 37 seconds, but I'm not going to go through the whole uh, uh, thing. But that's given um, – it was, it was just amazing. And that was from Tomball, Texas. Um, 
one of the things I, I will say is this, is that Dr. Dave is one of our broadcasters. Uh, he's in Johannesburg, South Africa. And you say, well, why would you highlight him? One of the main things that I take pride in is people um, uh, explaining what they're doing, what they're trying to capture. And I will just, this is only, I think it's only like, if I remember right, it's, I think it's like, it's it's short. It's not that long, and I'll, I'll cut it short if it, if it goes too long, but I did modify it. Can you guys hear that? We actually cannot hear it. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think well, it prevents us from hearing right. it. I'll explain it. What what he does is is uh, he compares images of of people who are who take professional images like this, and then what he does is he has a video camera, ninety second integration with his with his telescope. He, he has an eleven inch edge, and he compares what he's getting in ninety seconds compared to what this gentleman did in thirteen hours. And uh, um, it's he just basically complains. I don't know if you can see where. Uh, not complains. He explains. Uh, I don't know if you see where he's pointing at right now. He's pointing at a red star. And he explains basically that's basically towards its end. Um, it's becoming a very big star. And uh, he explains. He's so knowledgeable. He does his homework. And every one of his broadcasts are just so educational. He usually comes on in the afternoon uh, because then uh, we're, what, about six hours difference from South Africa on the East Coast here. And he's usually on around three in the afternoon. Uh, but uh, he's one of the most amazing broadcasters uh, and um, educational, unbelievably educational, unbelievably. Uh, we also have Craig, Craig in Tacoma Skies, Washington, and uh, – this was done with a Samsung uh, 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 435 video camera, um, and uh, I'm going to just show what what it is actually that you're seeing, what what you end up seeing, and uh, I know you see a blue dot there. Every one of his solar broadcasts always has that blue dot to explain how big the Earth is compared to the Sun. So that's about the size of the Earth. Uh, but these are some of the broadcasts that you end up seeing um, on Night Skies Network. One of the things that Craig does is he's very, very knowledgeable with uh, solar, and he explains proms and flares and, uh, I mean, unbelievably educational show, very educational. He also, on that same day, he actually switched over to uh, surface um, and, and he did some uh, surface, uh, and this is what you would see. This is what the, uh, they end up showing when, uh, when they're doing the uh, surface. But it's, it's just totally amazing. Um, sometimes they do inverted, which would be uh, in, uh, uh, it just shows, it gives such a 3D effect. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, great show. Um, he explains the lighter spots, the, the darker spots, everything. Um, the one thing, hold on one second here. One second. The one thing I, I do want to uh, um, explain the one thing I, I do want to explain is, is, is that one of the main reasons for Night Skies Network, as uh, as Toga had, has suggested, is it's just for educational purpose. It's also for relaxing. Uh, there are a lot of people who actually do register but only sign in as guests just because they want to pop in and out real quick. Uh, but it's just it's very educational. Uh, there are a lot of people from from as far. far I mean, we, we have people in Hawaii who broadcast, people in China who broadcast. I mean, South Africa, of course, uh, England. I can't forget my my friends in England, Australia. Actually, Australia. Um, I know they're listening tonight. Uh, um, so uh, hi out to them. Uh, but uh, from Scotland, uh, Nova Scotia, there are people from all over the planet that broadcast. 
and um, yeah, you're not going to get uh, uh, CCD quality pictures, but you're going to be there. It's they're very enjoyable pictures, very very enjoyable. Um, the one thing I, I also would like to say is I'd spoken to Adam, and uh, uh, Adam is is allowing me to rebroadcast some of his shows on NSN, and uh, those would be on uh, on on nights that uh, uh, no one is broadcasting. So I would rebroadcast those shows, and um, I've already done two of them, and people actually did enjoy it. So um, and that's about it. Uh, that's Night Sky's network for you. Any questions, Adam? Thanks, Joe. I haven't seen uh, any questions yet, but I do want to say uh, I've popped in a few times, and one of the things I really like about it is uh, you're in New Jersey, uh, yes. so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's always cloudy. Yes. So you've got an event, you've got a transit, you've got whatever it may be. You're planning on either observing it or shoot or photographing it. It's never going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> so right. you, you still have that opportunity. Sometimes the transit just doesn't hit your location. Uh, maybe they're seeing it in the south, southern hemisphere, and you actually get to watch it. Um, and I know I, I've seen I've seen a bunch of stuff on there, but it really is interesting with uh, even the deep sky stuff. How well the cameras pull it out. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I'm, ac I'm actually uh, um, I'm actually trying to pull up a. Um, a broadcaster who's on right now, but I'm not seeing an image. Uh, oh, he's got clouds. He, he just said to me he's got clouds. Oops. Happens to them, too. Yeah, but it's... He, um, even... Uh, I mean, we're a lot of us are imagers, so we come at it a little bit different way. We'll, we spend more than one night photographing uh, objects uh, to put it all together. But it really is crazy when you do some uh, electric, uh, electronically assisted astronomy on something like the Ring Nebula, uh, which is a relatively bright target. But even um, the Eagle Nebula, I've seen some great uh, shots on. Uh, you can push it dimmer and dimmer, and then when you get into live stacking, uh, you're pretty close. I mean, you're pretty close to what we're getting out there. We spend a lot more time and a lot of processing time and all of that uh, just to kind of eke out that little bit more. Well, but, Adam, Adam, this is not to take away from imagers because imagers oh. is just a special, to me, to be honest with you, that's one of the things that I'm crawling into shortly, okay? Uh, uh, hopefully, I'll, 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 I'll get some advice from Tolga. Uh, but uh, that's one of the things that uh, that I'm uh, I'm looking to get into. But 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 what's very interesting now? What's happening lately with the sensitivity of some of these cameras out there? You know, people are even though even though it only looks like a little fuzzball, they're going after Mag 18, Mag 19 objects that that are like, oh look, this thing is like a billion light years away or something like that. So it's it's uh, it's it's a great pastime and it's an educational time. And as what you were alluding to is, you're like, uh, was it at the last meteor shower? I was getting ready to, to set up this and that. Wouldn't you know? Three nights of clouds, three solid nights. And thank God that there were, that there were people and uh, um, in the Midwest who actually were able to broadcast and, and show some some meteors going through. So uh, yeah, it's it's. It's very, very, and the one thing I, I will tell you, Adam, is um, people get to know each other, let alone by first name, but they get to know each other on, on this broadcast. Um, as much as you want it to be an educational site, being that it's on the Internet, it, also, it becomes a social site, too. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do to stop that. But it's yeah. very, very friendly, very friendly. Yep. Osiris is commenting that uh, he was watching the Mercury transit from three locations while he was broadcasting Southern Hemisphere deep sky objects. Wow! So uh, you can even you can even do some solar observing while you're doing some deep sky imaging if you're uh, if you're just getting it right across the world. Well, one of the things one of the things, Adam, that uh, that people are are doing now is uh, um, they're and and being very successful at it. Uh, they're actually trying to, they're actually trying to um, 
do some daylight observing, meaning grabbing grabbing Jupiter, daylight Jupiter. Uh, of a day moon is not not a hard thing to do, but uh, there are people who are actually with certain filters they're trying to grab daylight planets. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I've already seen some images of uh, uh, M57 done in the daylight, and uh, it's you know totally impressed, totally impressed. I mean, you know. I'm always worried about light pollution, let alone trying to do it th with blue skies. Yeah. You know? Definitely. That's interesting. Do you get many um, universities or schools that uh, use your broadcasts in classrooms at all? Actually, we do have uh, some uh, middle schools. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, during the, uh, the, the Mercury uh, Transit, uh, they were basically showing it during their, uh, they put it up on their uh, big uh, screen in, in the auditorium while they were eating lunch. And, uh, and, and uh, they, their one science teacher was explaining, you know, how this won't happen. I think it was a, next time it happens again is in 10 years or nine years or something like that. You know, so these are some of the things that, uh, that happen. I mean, uh, there are some high schools that uh, have have requested private channels, which we're in the process of creating private channels, um, and that's only because of the fact that they want to use it as a study guide in, in a sense of um, students uh, would be observing and they would actually do their projects, and um, other, uh, other kids within that class can watch. Now, um, you know, I've tried to talk to them, I'm, and I'm talking to them to, to tell them, okay, you want a private, you go with a private, but what if other people want to see what you're doing, but they'd be invisible in the room and they can't talk. So that's one of the things that I, that, that I am suggesting. Uh, there is one university out west that is interested, um, and uh, we're, we're reaching out to, to, to a lot of people, and it's, um, I mean, there are some people that are reaching out to me, and I'm like, who is this? I was like, really? You know, so it's uh, it's really um, it's really breaking out there. It's, I mean, I, I keep looking to see if if uh, if Long Island, his, his name is Long Island Skies. His name is Sean. Uh, if his skies cleared up, because uh, I'm looking at my skies now, and I am like totally, totally clear. But uh, clear? oh yeah, I'm, I'm like yeah. I, I only have like a couple of uh, bubble clouds here and there, but otherwise, I'm I'm good. And uh, yeah, he's still he's still not there. He's he's not. Uh, but just to let you know, I just want to show you uh, that screen of um, of what he's. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Of course, he's got nothing in the screen, and these are all the viewers on the right hand side right now. Oh, I see one of our viewers. I see one of our one of the people in this room is in that room. That's funny. Okay. So. Uh, um, but these are all people that, uh, and, and, and Mr. Wizard is is a gentleman from uh, from Seattle, the guy that was doing the solar. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are people. I mean, and and these are like you're talking West Coast, Midwest. You're talking the one guy from Texas, California. I mean, people from all over come in, and uh, uh, he's actually using his Samsung. Um, uh, Mead 8-inch eight, eight EMC with a Samsung 2000 video camera. So that means... So, so that means... So that means that uh, um, he's probably going after the moon. Yep. So... Very cool. And it's funny because I had an astronomy class in college that we learned completely out of the textbook. Never did any observing. And um, it just seems like the perfect opportunity. Uh, my class was 11 a.m., and uh, it's dark somewhere at 11 a.m., so it's a good opportunity for colleges or, or anything to find Absolutely. Out, get people to, to look at it. That was one of the really interesting things about astronomy to me, was, uh, getting into astronomy, was that um, you, know, you can read a textbook, you can watch Cosmos on the TV. That probably interests all of us. But not a lot of people have actually looked through a good telescope or, or seen what today's technology could do. And this is a great opportunity for beginners, but it's also good for people who just want to enjoy astronomy. 
I, I would tell you something, Adam. Uh, two years ago, uh, I belonged to a, a one of the clubs I belonged to is up in Montclair State University. It's, it, it's uh, their their setup is up there, but um, um, I was I was using Nice Guys my laptop and Nice Guys Network and showing how I was broadcasting, and all these college students came by and said, uh, "What's the website? What's the website?" And I said, "What's the big thing about the website?" He goes. Well, we have projects to do, so he goes. We could just snap the pictures and, and do these projects, which I will tell you, um, and all our broadcasters. Okay, if you're if you're broadcasting something out there, uh, it's free to everyone. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not it's it's open, and if people want to take snapshots of it, it, it is, and, and uh, it's fine with me. Totally fine with me. It's about enjoying yourself. There's no privacy of uh, copyright and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I had about 14, 15 uh, college students who uh, um, who wanted uh, uh, a business card, and uh, then the one guy goes, "Oh, can I have your cell phone? So uh, your your cell phone number, so I can call you to see when someone's broadcasting." Other than that, right? Ends up being he ends up sharing it with his class, and I ended up getting all these like phone calls. And I was like, "Who are you?" Who are you? So and that's what they were doing because they had no way of getting these images because the the um, the professor didn't rec didn't allow any images from 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 their books, so they were doing live broadcasts, and that's how they and they loved it. It was great. It was really really great. Yeah, the interest is there. I mean, you you I'm sure everyone sees it. You people hear you're into astronomy, and then they ask you a million questions. It's it's not like uh, I mean, everyone's into it when they hear, see it on TV, but. When you have your telescope set up, I'm a proponent of sidewalk astronomy. Um, our club does uh, solar uh, at our first Fridays downtown. Mm -hmm. People are interested. You just have to give them the opportunity. And occasionally live astronomy from your living room or from your kitchen, as I am, uh, that's the opportunity. And, uh, yeah, you're really doing some cool stuff. The one thing I will tell you, before we, we had Flash, and uh, um, it was very hard to get people... To get to view to view Nice Guys Network on your iPhone or Android or, or whatever. Now with HTML5, it's it's a breeze. It's a total breeze, and uh, it works great. And there are a lot of times <laughs> it scares me. A lot of times people uh, uh, they'll be watching a broadcast from the West Coast while I'm, I'm broadcasting here, and they're driving home from work, and they have their phone on their dash watching me while they're driving home from work. I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, so, uh, um, but that's what I wanted to do it, it, is the site, I wanted to be as friendly, friendly as possible. And uh, I think we've accomplished that. I really do. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I can, I can say I've been on to a few broadcasts, and uh, I, I tend to go on as a guest because I do want to, I'm one of those guys that wants to pop in and listen to what they're saying. and not Which is fine. Yeah. Which is fine. But uh, a lot of people who really know what they're talking about and uh, some really interesting broadcasts. I will tell you this, Adam, and um, the only reason why I know is because they tell me, but there are a lot of manufacturers who log in as guests. Mm -hmm. A lot of As a matter of fact, there was, uh, I think it was the last week, it was, I think it was last Wednesday, I ended up getting a text message from one of the manufacturers State, telling me to tell the guy to lower the gain and his image will be a lot better. <laughs> kind of like, okay. So at the, so there are a lot of uh, manufacturers that, that, that really watch and, and uh, because they, they want to see um, how their cameras are performing and how are people using a, uh, a somewhat imaging camera for – and I, I think I said to you, uh, lately I've been using the 1600. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I use it with uh, uh, Astro Toaster, and uh, basically what it does is I I capture I capture images, throw them into a folder, then Astro Toaster goes in there, picks up the images as they're coming in, and then I use Astro Toaster to adjust the image, and so it it, it makes for a near live uh, uh, broadcast, and uh, um, and that's what people do. So some of these these manufacturers who are always looking. Uh, especially the the camera manufacturers who are looking, they'll sometimes text me or or the next morning I'll get a text, hey, great show that uh, last night and this and that, and that makes me feel good because of the fact that they're also 
it gives them a way to see how people are using their cameras. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it's it's more of a because they're talking, uh, they can hear what the guy is saying, the guy or girl. We also have 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 women who do broadcast, um, but uh, they can hear what they're saying, and and uh, and it's sometimes I'd like to try to talk to them into logging in as a registered user. But I think if uh, if if uh, if a manufacturer would log in as a registered user, I think there'd be a million questions posted to him instead of the broadcast. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So on, on that note, though, I have heard uh, just registered users uh, comparing notes or sharing uh, information with the people who are capturing, uh, uh, doing solar, uh, lower your gain, increase yeah. your exposure, whatever it may be, and that gets confusing uh, to a newcomer. Yeah, there's yes. a lot of settings there. There's a lot of dials and whatnot, uh, and it can make a big difference. And so. that's why that's why I'm, one of the things that I constantly stress is is such a friendly site. Yeah. That if uh, uh, oh look at this, <laughs> I have to show you this. One of our broadcast one of our broadcasters uh, kn knows that it's uh, it's clouded and. And so he's uh, he decided to do a a, a thing, uh, a little stream thing. Astronomy is way cool stuff. Now this is uh, um, the wizard, of course, is and uh, he's from uh, Tacoma, Washington. That's him. Uh, you've been warned, but he he's doing a little slideshow because everything else is is uh, people are are clouded out, and these are some of the images that he's done. The Saturn Nebula, uh, and this is not to take. And a lot of times, I want people if if there's no one broadcasting, or even if they are broadcasting, and and you want to do a slideshow to show people what's going on and what you've done, be it a video camera, a CMOS camera, an imaging camera, whatever. I don't object to that. I, I really would would love people to. Um, to show show their stuff and show how they got it. Uh, the one thing that we are, I, I, and I was hesitant to really say anything right now, but one of the things that we are, Adam, going to do is we are going to um, create a another page for imagers. And when you say, well, imagers, in what sense? I mean, it's pretty boring watching some getting images, you know, like that. But I, I more wanted it for people who want to show how they process those images, mm -hmm. how they bring in those, uh, um, those uh, the red, black, and, and green, and all of them put them together and how to process them, to teach people who do want an image uh, how it's done, what's, what, kind of soft, what kind of software options are there out there. And uh, there is an interest to this uh, to all uh, – a lot of people are very interested because – Usually, if you start out in CCD, you usually don't go to video. But if you start out in, in, in video, you usually go to, to, to CCD imaging. And uh, there are a lot of people that are very interested in this. So that's another page uh, probably you know, six months down the line we're going to create and see if people uh, take advantage of it. Very cool. Oh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> Osiris is telling you Mr. Wizard is on. So... Uh... It looks like we have a few people in uh, both rooms here. Yes. But, yeah, some cool, some cool stuff, and that's that is video. Uh, those are video. Yes. Captions. That's what you will see live if you're going on tonight's Skies Network. You know that I mean the Swan Nebula. I mean it's 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 cool stuff. It's definitely cool stuff. Uh, you can't. It's it's about um, instant gratification in a sense, mm -hmm. and. Uh, when you do this, but uh, yes, this is a video. But uh, you know, lately I've been using my DSLRs, uh, uh, my Infinity. I, you know, the Infinity, uh, the 1600. I mean, there's a bunch of cameras that we all use. This is actually a video camera right here, the Eastern Veil. Vale. You know, and that and and that's what these guys end up doing. So, very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, coming on. And uh, basically, you guys know where to find them. Nightskiesnetwork.com. Uh, they there's 
almost always a broadcast going on, or there's almost always something to find. I logged on there earlier today. Uh, was it today? I think it was earlier today, and there was something going on. Uh, definitely worth checking out, even if you just want to chat about astronomy with someone for a while, which most of us like doing. Um, and a lot, and, and there's a lot of equipment conversations, Adam. A lot of equipment conversations, and people just give their suggestions on what on what to do. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions, ask them now. Um, otherwise, uh, well, what I will do is I will uh, mention next week's uh, topic. Uh, Charles Bracken will be on. Uh, Charles Bracken is the author of Deep Sky Imaging Primer and the Astrophotography Star Atlas. And um, he will be presenting on... Uh, oops. Uh, he will be presenting on... Uh, let me see. What is the official title of his presentation, uh, Understanding Signal, Noise, and Resolution. So that's a, a topic that, well, I think we're all happy to talk about and happy to listen to because uh, it's basically all about the, the mathematics behind what we're doing, but knowing, uh, knowing the background of it helps you understand uh, how to get more out of your data. Uh, Joe, again, thank you for coming on. Not a problem, Adam, and thank you for, for uh, letting me come on and uh, put this together. And, uh, and then also I want to thank you once again for allowing me to rebroadcast some of your shows. Um, it's, it's just uh, very um, – people enjoy them. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, every time I broadcast, I always, I always, always tell people about the Astro Imaging Channel, always, 9.30, yeah. Sunday nights. Yep, yep, they can, they can see us live and ask their questions live. Um, we are getting one comment, so I might as well read out. Uh, George uh, Kolosowski, uh, can, he can broadcast from the coffee table here. Keeps it casual and fun and not always the big scope. Just the lenses on, uh, just the lenses on a cam give a wider view when needed. So uh, very cool. A lot of the video cameras have smaller uh, sensors, so you can use either a lens or a smaller scope. Uh, Osiris is saying, uh, show us your clear skies, Joseph. Hold on one second. I may be able to show you my clear skies. Let me open my, I mean, have, have we got a minute? We have a minute, right? Yeah. Let me open my, uh, let me Let me just, uh, where's my all sky? I have way too many uh, icons on this computer. <laughs> Let me take me a second. If you have some time, it's going to take me a second to bring this up. Yeah. yeah, well, the weather flipped on me. It was supposed to be cloudy, windy, and stormy yesterday and clear tonight, and uh, it ended up flipping, so I wasn't prepared to image last night. It was clear as all anything last night, and today it's cloudy and windy and no thunderstorms, but not an imaging night. Ooh, I am seeing. Uh, okay. Oh my lord. I thought, okay. I think my all sky camera made a liar out of me. Let me share my all sky camera. There's my all sky camera. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not as clear as I thought I was. Oh. Yeah, that's what, that's my all sky cam. Oh well. When I looked out the window, it looked okay. Oh, well. That's it. That's what happens. Um, our, uh, we're getting a comment on our in our other comment section. And, uh, RFJ is saying he, he likes watching the broadcast, not, not necessarily of the higher-end equipment, but seeing the more inexpensive units. Uh, as a Malincam Junior Pro owner, it's nice to see the results that are possible with these camera types. Um, so it's not, yeah, it's not just people using really, really expensive uh, equipment. Uh, sometimes you appreciate the people that are using the equipment that, if you're interested, you can basically afford and go out and buy. Um, and uh, Joe is, saying, uh, is asking, can you watch past shows on Night Skies Network, or is it only live? That is something um, in th we're doing, and I, I should have mentioned this, we're doing this in uh, three phases. Phase number four, we're allowing the broadcasters up to uh, 
um, I forget what the storage capacity is, that they're able to record their shows and keep them in what we call a locker within NSN. They can keep their images or the show within the locker, and it'll stay there for 30 days. And so uh, until they upload it back to their computer, where they can keep it if they if they choose to, but uh, that's going to become be in phase three that that we're going to allow it to. And and to be honest with you, um, I know you had mentioned Malincam. I'm I'm actually an owner of like six different Malincams, mm -hmm. and um, they're very sensitive, very good cameras, and there are a lot of broadcasters that 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 use Malincams. Yeah, that basically started a lot of the video astron video assistive astronomy stuff, the Malin cams, and now cameras are getting better and better, and people are doing it with lots of different types of cameras. Well, there are people that I mean, CMOS has really improved immensely mm -hmm. and uh, affordable. And uh, I mean, to be honest with you, uh, uh, ZWO is is coming out with some very affordable uh, cameras. And, uh, and these are and these is what you're calling you know USB cameras where basically you have one maybe two wires if if you have cooling and that's it. So uh, um, where a uh, um, analog camera sometimes you have four to five wires hanging off of the back. Yep. And uh, wire management is important, but when you have that that many wires, it's an issue. <laughs> you know. But I still I kept my mounting cams because I, I enjoy them. Yep. Yeah, and I'll, I'll uh, reiterate what you said about Tolga's presentation last week. Very cool uh, for the imagers in the room, but probably for you Night Sky Network broadcasters. Uh, it's a computer mounted on your OTA, uh, on your tube. Uh, right. so basically, you've eliminated almost all the wires. You've got Wi-Fi. Uh, makes, makes it a lot more trouble-free. Uh, and Tom... Uh, is saying Night Sky's network is more than easy to show a night sky. He's broadcasted several times over the years. So I think uh, he's advocating for one of us, uh, or for, for anyone here, to try it out. Get online. By the way, Sky broadcast. Go ahead. Yeah. By the way, uh, Adam, uh, Toga's uh, presentation last week mm -hmm. made me do this. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I don't know if you can... Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, Ugh. I just talked to Toga earlier today. I said, I tell you what, in about a month when the observatory is done, you better come over here <laughs> and help me. Yeah. So I'm in the process of, uh, of building an observatory with uh, two peers in it. Yeah. So. Joe, uh, I just want to, uh, well, I just want to, like, thank you for doing this. You know, People need to understand that you're doing this completely free with your own money, with not charging people anything. You know, I just want to really thank you from the astronomy community for having this website up. You know, thank you. Definitely. Well, thank you very, thank you very much, Tolga. And there are a lot of people, not just you, a lot of people from all over always thank me constantly. But Adam, th this is almost like a form of therapy, believe it or not. It's very relaxing. The only time it's not relaxing is when your software decides to have a hiccup. That's the only time it's not relaxing. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a great time. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes with this stuff. I mean, your your uh, redesign of the website's amazing. I, having played around with Google Plus and trying to get a website going with this, what you did is actually uh, Difficult and expensive to accomplish. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks again. No uh, problem. All right. Well, that's basically it for today. Uh, one more time, I'm going to thank Joe for coming on. Check him out on Night Skies Network, or check out all the broadcasters on Night Skies Network. Just a great, just a great place to see it. Uh, next week, Charlie Bracken, and uh, that's about it. So uh, see you guys next week, and um, clear skies to you all. Thank you, Adam. Thank you.